Welcome indeed to Cusick Park here in NS for the first round senior hurling championship match between Clare Castle, the Clare and Munster Club hurling champions against the men from the capital of County Clare. The Magpies looking good as you can see, Sparrow Lachlan will be playing at uh, full forward and here are some of the Aero players who line out today. So let's go straight to the team lineup on both uh, clubs. Aero will start with Noel Constant between the posts, Michael Gairn, Moss Corbett, Paddy Guilfoyle. Mark Fitzgerald, Fergus Flynn and Sean McCarthy make up the half-back line. Declan Tobin, Sean Moylan will be at midfield. Half-forward line, Roland Cooney, Colin Lynch, Barry Keating and the full forward line of Cahal Egan, Cahal Shannon and Stephen McNamara. Der Castle with Tommy Higarty between the posts, Der Kenny, Martin Sheedy, Bernard Scanlon, Ken Morrissey, Anthony Daly, Oliver Tunkett. Midfield will be Stephen Sheedy and John Pine. Half-forward line, Robert Fitzgerald, Fergus Tuhi and Danny Scanlon. And the full forward line of Dermot Fitzgerald, the Sparrow at full, and Ken Ralph at corner forward. And as you can see, we join the match, the action live here at Cusick Park with their rogue in the attack, going for their first score. Here's Cahill Shannon trying to get inside Jerkani. Difficult enough angle, but he sends that to the right and wide. A very large crowd here at Cusick Park, expecting a really invigorating match between these very near and indeed intense rivals. Tommy Hegarty won a Munster Club Championship medal last season hoping to at least hold on to the county championship and then they'll worry about the Munster Club title later on. The first line ball of the day is going to Clare Castle. And the man that's going to be taking this is the left half-back, Oliver Plunkett. Wearing that distinctive red helmet. Sideline ball around the centre field area, far side of the field, dropping that ball in. And to uh, latch on to it is Gerald Lachlan. Cut out this time by Paddy Gilfoyle. Straight out, however, to Robert Fitzgerald. And Fitz sends that to the right and wide. So we have two wides in the opening minute. And here's Noel Constantine, a native of Clare Castle. And, of course, uh, closely related to the county PRO of the Clare County Board, Des Crow. And Noel now lining out with Aero. That ball comes down towards Gerald Auckland. Trying to get away from his marker, Moss Corbett. Well cut out here, however. Comes down towards the left half forward, Barry Keating, their senior football captain in 1998. Good pull indeed. Comes to the centre half forward, Barry Rogue. We all know quite well, and we're all delighted to see him back in action. That, of course, is Colin Lynch. Full forward, Cahill Shannon, a noted footballer as well. Very stylish player in both codes. And you can keep an eye out for him at number 14 today. Number 15 there in the red jersey, just going out of picture, is of course the man who scored a great goal against Cork in last year's Munster Championship, Stephen McNamara. Great catch by Robert Fitzgerald. And that is going once again to the right and wide. Indeed, as this game is underway here at Cusick Park, the crowds still keep pouring in at the uh, Quinsworth end of affairs here at uh, a very uh, fine-tuned Cusick Park pitch. Paddy Guilfoy gets it uh, a little bit out the field. The only comes down is John Pine. He's nicely hooked, knocked away from Oliver Plunkett. Comes down towards Declan Tobin. This is Sean Mahan. Nicely dispossessed again by Oliver Plunkett, working hard. Conlon Lynch is battling hard there for Aerogue as well. A little bit of a chop down there by Aerogue's uh, Shawnee McCarthy. And Barry Keating just telling his colleagues to cool matters down. Match referee from your market in Fergus, Sean McMahon. Ken Ralph. Tipperary man now very much a magpie going to take this free and as you can see now that's what he's facing hits it well and hits it straight over the bar for the first point of the match scored by Castle's Kenny Ralph Noel Constein's puck out Big hand there, going up of the Castle man. Belongs to Stephen Sheedy, bravely putting it up. Fergie Tuhi here battling with his county mate, Colin Lynch. 
Stephen McNamara, nice scale, but the ball had crossed the line, and that is going to be a sideline ball for Clare Castle. Waiting to take it is Ken Morrissey, wearing number five, gone from the midfield spot now, going back to the half back line to strengthen that area. It's quite a strong half back line of Ken Morrissey, Anthony Daly, and Oliver Plunkett. It's at low, down towards Fergie Tuhi. There with him is Sean Mahan. Comes down to Fergus Flynn. Flynn is reputedly a, quite a good hurler. We're expecting good things out of uh, the centre back in uh, the town of Venice. Here's Fergie Tuhi. Running through Sean McCarthy. Great pull indeed by Stephen Sheedy. Gives it full power, but uh, unfortunately, the Castleman can't keep it in. And that's yet another wide for the Magpies. This is Paddy Gilfoyle, sturdy, strong cornerback. He'll be doing his best to keep Dermot Fitzgerald quiet for the day. And still the crowds pour in here. Noel Constantine with the puck out, right down the middle. Pulled on again by Sean Mahan. Jerk Kenny and Stephen McNamara. Kenny does very well. Here's it down towards the right half forward, Robert Fitzgerald. Intercepting was the big air old man. That's a ball for Cahill Shannon. Back there, however, is Martin Sheedy. And Martin has to concede the 65, as the match umpire here, John Power, clearly indicates. So the first 65 of the game to Fergus Flynn, centre back for a rogue. He's supposed to be an equivalent of Sean McMahon in terms of taking frees, and he proves it here But a very good point. So the side's level. Puck out by Tommy Hegarty. Again, a lengthy one. Coming through, and it was Fergus Flynn. So, fouling by the Clare Castle man. I think he was pointing to Ken Morrissey, so it's a free for a rogue. Shawnee McMahon did uh, linesman indeed in some big games in Cook Park this year and must be in line over the next season or so for a, a big match in Croke Park. A very fine referee as Fergus Flynn now takes this free yet again. This ball is inside his own half of the field, so he's a long way out, and perhaps contemplating going for it. Hits it well. It's going, and still going, and it's gone over the bar. Fergus Flynn's second point of the match, and Aerog from the capital of Clare, the town of Ennis, now lead their great rivals by two points to one. Tommy Hegarty's puck out over to the far over side. Nicely picked up by John Pine. Sending it up towards Robert Fitzgerald coming through on the blind side. Turning and that is straight over the bar. Good score by Robert Fitzgerald. And very quickly these sides are level yet again. Christy Ryan the umpire here. Giving a word of encouragement to uh, the goalkeeper. A position he played in for many years indeed. For Clare Castle's great rivals, Newmarket and Fergus. Here come the Magpies yet again. Searching ball over towards the corner. Sparrow, Ger O'Loughlin latching onto it. Now a married man trying to get past his fullback uh, opponent, Tomas Corbett, who he'd know quite well from Clare hurling scenes. And Tomas is fouled, and that's going to be a free out for Aero. The boss is going to take it himself. Well gathered by Stephen Sheedy. Well, almost. Coming in there was Colin Lynch. And get it up first time. Getting it up is Oliver Plunkett. And the rogue man was fouling the Castle lad. So that's going to be a free for the Magpies. Anthony Daly taking his first free of the day. That's a dangerous ball, but it's just tailing to the left and wide. So once again, Noel Constantine will have the task of taking the puck out. And despite the game now being on about seven and a half minutes, you can still see the crowd coming in here to this blockbuster first round championship match in the county of Clare. 
defending champions against their greatest rivals, Aero. Anthony Daly trying to pull in it. Going back to gather is John Pine. Over towards this side of the field, well gathered yet again by Robert Fitzgerald. That's a good effort. Oh, it's off the post and it's gone wide. That was a superb effort by the Clare Castle number 10 and very unfortunate that it came off the top of the post and then dribbled wide. Robert Fitzgerald did very well. Getting some attention, Shani McMahon stopping play for a moment. As uh, Robert gets some attention here just for a belt there on the side of the face. Noel Constantine. Decides to switch wings. Not a great puck out. So that's going to be a sideline ball for Clare Castle, far side of the field. And gone across to take it is Oliver Plunkett. Name Plunkett very much associated with the GA in Clare Castle down through the years. Oh, that's a great sideline cut. Drops it right in. There's a loose ball there for a Clare Castle forward, but it's an Aero defender that gets there first. Sends it down again this side of the field. Steve McNamara coming with Jer Kenny. Ken Morrissey is back there as well, helping out the defence. Coming in now is big Stephen Sheedy, back towards Anthony Daly. Has the composure to get by Stephen McNamara. Grasps the Hurley short grip style and sends it up towards his corner forward. Well gathered indeed. Half blocked by Fergie Tuhi. The ball is there for a Clark Castleman. Again it's Stephen Sheedy trying to get away from Sean Mahan. Half blocked by Tomas Corbett. And Corbett has the time and composure to gather it and send it back down this side of the field. Underneath it and battling hard is Barry Keating and Ken Morrissey. It's a sideline ball however for Clark Castle and I'm sure Ken Morrissey is going to take it himself. So a good bout of hurling there for the last few minutes as Ken Morrissey now takes this sideline cut. Sends it in low. Barry Keating is there. And they're all send it downfield up towards Stephen McNamara who can't hold on to it first time. Did very well. Cuts away from Jerk Kenny. Chance here for McNamara. And he lobs it over Tommy Hegarty's crossbar for Stephen Mack's first point of the match. And he did very well showing some nice style and skill there. Getting inside the Clare Castle defence and scoring a very good point. And as you can see down at the other end, Shawnee McMahon halts play as the Arog defender has picked up an injury and Anthony Daly gets a chance to change the hurling. Stephen McNamara meanwhile uh, takes a drop of the water and Tommy Hegarty takes the puck out. Locked down by the bomber, Shawnee McCarthy cuts inside and passes into middle to nobody in particular. The hard pull there is by the Carcassian man, Robert Fitzgerald Avoids it. Shawnee McCarthy pleads his innocence for a wild pull. He was going for the ball, but Shawnee McMahon is telling him exactly why. And in fact, he is booking Shawnee McCarthy. And that's the first booking for the left half back. And Shawnee McMahon very decently explaining exactly why he feels it necessary to book the left half back. So it's Kenny Ralph that's going to take this free well within his range to put this over the bar scored one point already from a free this is more dead straight in front of the boss and relatively easy as well two points for Kenny Ralph in this match so Noel Constein again with the puck out must be in a rather strange position facing his own Clare Castle just half mile down the road in the town of Ennis against them today as Claire Castleman picked up a nasty head injury there but uh, I think judging by the reaction of the Claire Castle players they feel that it was more accidental than anything else because nobody really protested but the Aero man is booked and now checks that his uh, main colleague is okay in fact he was just picking up the hurley Claire Castleman is still down injured and requiring some medical attention Robert Fitzgerald is okay. Uh, he resumes in the centre of the 
attack. Very uh, pivotal player, really. And he's operating moving forward. He's doing very well. Gathering lots of possession. Meanwhile, it's Kenny Ralph that's going to take this free. He's just scored a point a moment ago. Now going for his hat-trick of points in this game. And again, it's from a central position. Very reliable, consistent free taker. Hits it well, and this time it's gone over the bar. Three points for Carcastle, thanks to the stick work of Ken Ralph, and four points in all. Aerog trailing by a point, Clarecastle leading by four points to three. Christy Ryan says the ball has disappeared, so two does Noel Constein. So there is a slight delay until Noel has the slither. A new one has been supplied, and now you we can begin to see the crowd at the far side packing into Cusick Park, expecting a real enthralling match. So far, so good. Standard of hurling, not by any means brilliant, but entertaining. Colin Lynch trying to get a ball inside, easily cut out. Here comes Claire Castle now. Good ball down towards uh, the corner forward. Uh, Dermot Fitzgerald blocked this time, and Aero sends it down towards Barry Keating, but they're waiting for it is Kenny Morrissey. Sends it back up the field, up towards Gerald Ockland. Nice, stylish and composed Gerald Lachlan, but that's a waste of possession and that has gone harmlessly wide. So it's a puck out yet again for Noel Kunstein. You can just uh, see that breeze uh, favouring uh, Clare Castle in this first half. It's a very slight breeze, but still it's uh, very influential in this game. Barry Keating. <laughs> I don't think, uh, judging by the reaction, the people liked it. Uh, Kenny Ralph and Barry Keating exchanging words there. Barry Keating did pull wildly and correctly. Shawnee McMahon is warning Barry Keating and booking uh, Barry for a wild pull, which uh, was the correct decision, undoubtedly, and giving a free to Clarecastle. And off camera, a new Hurley has been supplied to the Clare football captain. So Kenny Ralph standing over this ball and trying to put Clare Castle in front by two points. Hits it well, but sends it to the left and wide. This first round match, of course, was delayed. Great loyalty being shown by all the clubs in County Clare to Colin Lynch, who I'm sure doesn't need reminding, nobody needs reminding how much of a loss he was to the Clare Senior Hurling team for that suspension imposed by the Munster Council of three months. And earlier, as Colin tackles his Clare captain Anthony Daly, Colin played a major role in Lissy Casey qualifying for the County Football Championship for the first time when setting up the goal against Milltown earlier today in Dunbeg to put Lissy Casey in the county semi-final against St. Joseph's Dura Bearfield next Saturday evening here at Cusick Park in Ennis. So historic times indeed for the Lissy Casey men. And uh, great loyalty shown by all the clubs in County Clare to Colin. As far side of the field, it's Oliver Plunkett that's going to take the sideline ball. It's it well. Good ball dropping in. Christie says it's wide. So the puck out again is for Noel Kunstlein. The umpire showing some nice footwork. The market Celtic could have signed him on years ago. Anyway, we shouldn't be mentioning foreign games in this uh, video. The Clare Senior Hurling Championship first round. Noel Kunstlein <laughs> takes the puck out. Sends it down the middle. Colin Lynch can't reach it. Sean Mahan does. Getting away from the attentions of Anthony Daly. Trying to make an angle for himself. Unable to hook him. Trying to get Stephen Mack. Jerk Kenny is there. And a wild pull by Cahill Shannon. A very late one, obviously, and I'm surprised if Shawnee McMahon, the match referee, doesn't have a word with the pull forward. Because that looked like a very late challenge, but again, no argument from the Clarecastle players. And that free quickly taken by Anthony Daly. Blocked by Shawnee McCarthy. Knew that he was going to be hooked, so he used the boot instead. It comes back down to Anthony Daly, sending it back into the corner. Only there's nobody there except Tomas Corbett. 
Kenny Morrissey is there, half blocked down into the centre. Nicely picked up by Stephen McNamara, who's roaming around midfield now to try and gather possession. Carl Shannon can't gather it. Anthony Daly is there. Clears down the line. Shawnee McCarthy again getting a hurley to it, ahead of Stephen Sheedy. It's a good testing ball for the Clarecastle defence. It's there for Jerkani, well pulled on first time. Coming down towards Declan Tobin, knocking it back, but it only comes into the path of Kenny Ralph. With him is Fergus Flynn, sending it into the centre. Trying to get Fergie too, he is now operating a corner forward. And it's Fergie once more. Difficult enough angle from there, and he sends it to the right and wide. Four points to three, Clarecastle leading. Noel Constein again with the puck out, down this side. John Rahan can't reach it, Anthony Daly can. Locked by Shawnee McCarthy, who's dominating this right, or rather left wing position for uh, Aero. And that's going to be a free for Ennis. And again it's Fergus Flynn, that's coming across to take it. He scored two points, both of them from frees. This, as you can see, is literally metres inside his own half of the field. And this, again, considering the breeze, just might be within his capabilities. It's it well. This time going for it to drop it in. Well gathered. Well, we thought it was gathered, but it was cleared on the field by the Clarecastle defender. One man and uh, Stephen Sheedy battling. It's Fergie Tuhi that latches onto the loose ball over towards the corner as Clarecastle cleverly open up this aero defence by spreading the ball around. Kenny Ralph again tries, but uh, once more sends it to the wrong side of those goalposts. The puck out again is for Noel Constein. You can see that breeze blowing there beside the goalposts. It is quite a strong breeze in favour of Clarecastle. And I think they'll be rather disappointed if they go in at half time without a substantial lead and not taking full advantage of it. Oh, this is well gathered by Colin Lynch. Getting inside, Anthony Daly. Lynch goes away with the ball stuck to the hurley, trying to make an angle for himself. Hits it well and puts it over the bar. Huge round of applause for Colin Lynch, showing his style, his power, and indeed his accuracy. Getting inside his captain's cover. And it's doing very well. And now the crowd respond here at Kilsey Park. As Lynch and Daly get uh, entangled with each other, Barry Keating comes across now to know what's wrong, as Anthony Daly inquires. So I think the two Clare senior hurlers are going to be spoken to by a former Clare senior hurler and telling cool matters down. by the referee, you know, we're here to play a hurling. Despite the fact of uh, being great pals off the field and playing fair senior hurling together, this is all about club championship, club pride, and more importantly, it's about Clarecastle and their Oak of Venice. You really can't get better than that in the Banner County. Stephen Sheedy did very well to get that up in his hurling. Well blocked down, added to by Danny Scanlon. That's going to be surely a foul. On Michael Gale, and free out at this now begins to spark up. Passions beginning to be aroused, to say the least, in this club championship first round. And again, it's Tomas Corbett that's going to take it. Can't really get behind that very much, and uh, gathering it easily is Stephen Sheedy. The support is from John Pine. Down towards Gerald Lachlan an angle for himself, didn't quite connect the first hour indeed the second time. Michael Gairn trying to stay with them and that ball goes out over the long line and harmlessly uh, wide. And Castle having the better of the exchanges around the midfield area. Here's Fergie too, he's much more involved now. Trying to get away from one, two challenges. Did very well. Drops this ball in and Tomas Corbett is there for a roll. Able to gather a 
first time is right half forward Ronan Cooney Colin Lynch is there to lend assistance there's uh, no accident for that sliding tackle on Robert Fitzgerald and anything else here comes Barry Keating sending the ball into space for Cahill Shannon to run after with him of course as always will be Martin Sheedy Shannon sending that ball right across the face of the goal. It's there for Stephen McNamara. Well blocked down by Jerkani and great defending as Anthony Daly sends it down the middle of the pitch. Well pulled on by Fergus Glenn. Hooking it nicely over towards Colin Lynch. Getting away from left half back Oliver Plunkett. Lynch again making space for himself. And that's his second point of the match. Brilliant play by Colin Lynch. And he really is in sparkling form at centre forward meanwhile there's entanglements and a little bit of a shamazzle here developing Martin Sheedy and Cahill Shannon Joe Kenny as the old man is down Shawnee McMahon is having a word he's looking for one player in particular and now he's going to speak to Bernard Scanlon and he's gone back into his umpires and all of that now has quietened down as Shawnee McMahon speaks with John Power and his fellow umpire about exactly who was involved in this. Now this row has been quietened down and they can concentrate again on the game of hurling as Bernard Scanlon is booked by the referee and being given a severe finger wagging, not once, here he comes again and saying next time you're off. Meanwhile, a rogue man gets some attention. That's uh, Connor forward Cahill Egan. That's the white helmet again. Crowd have plenty to talk about. There's Mike McNamara, our hurling selector, looking at old and indeed new talent here in Cusick Park. As Tommy Hegarty is about to take this puck out. Two Lynch, Barry Keating adding to it. Doing well here. As the captain of last year, Martin Sheedy. Fergie Tuhi trying to get away from the cover of Mark Fitzgerald and Fergus Blit. In towards Kenny Rath. Moss Corbett now with him. And Rath on the side hits it well. And scores his first point from play, his fourth point of the match. Castle now leading by five, by uh, what's the score now? Four point, five points each, in fact, as we uh, go towards the half time whistle. Johnny McMahon is calling for the slither. And in fact, for delaying, he's giving a throw ball. So Johnny McMahon is taking none of it as there's uh, belts being exchanged there between Thomas Corbett and Kenny Ralph. And, uh, Ralph started uh, that initially as the two boys continue and now they've decided to put it out and now it continues again and this is so unnecessary and the game was being played in very good spirit in the opening 15-20 minutes and temper is being frayed now Moss Corbett and Kenny Ralph both guilty of indulging in off the ball activity and the match referee will should consult with his umpires and both at least should be booked if not sent off because uh, certainly that was uh, unsavory to say the least particularly because the game has been played in a very sporting fashion and referee correctly is in fact booking Tomas Corbett now Shawnee McMahon we will follow and pursue and see what uh, other developments will take place here Kenny Ralph uh, recovering from that belt and now being spoken to by the referee again and in fact I'm sure he's going to get a booking as well just a finger wagging rather than a booking and the referee 
did the correct thing and the players obviously will have I'm sure learned from that experience to cut it out in other words the puck out by Noel Considine here comes Stephen Sheedy great battler at midfield for Clarecastle now it's a loose ball for Clarecastle forward there's nobody there despite the late presence of Dermot Fitzgerald Paddy Gilfoyle sends it down this side of the field trying to hold on to his Barry Keating Ken Morrissey comes in to challenge still Barry doing some nice style did well Jerk Kenny trying to pull in the first time chasing after him is Stephen McNamara back into the middle ball eventually hopped into the hand of Cahal Egan the outside towards uh, Colin Lynch that slip was unfortunate from Colin's point of view as Oliver Plunkett had the chance to recover still Lynch did very well but he gives it straight to Anthony Daly sends it way down the field Fergus Flynn is there for Aero Gerald Lachlan good ball inside good vision back again to this side for Fergie too he is available in front of the post hits it and that is going over the bar for Fergie too his first point of the match and a most valuable one for Clare Castle but again considering the strength of that breeze Clare Castle not playing all that well and Fergie too his point signals a half time whistle here at Cusick Park in Ennis a right old battle between these two great traditional rivals their castle just edging in front at the half time whistle Cusick Park now at this stage packed to capacity at the far side as well as underneath us as the second half gets underway a rogue now with wind advantage Jarkani pulling on it first time sending it over to the far side but that's going to carry a little bit too much pace sideline ball for Aero and over there to take it is Ronan Cooney Cooney hits it low half blocked goes back to Shani McMahon Sean Mahan rather this is uh, Declan Tobin that's battling so two is at the right hand forward Ronan Cooney but it's Tobin that comes away with it that's a good ball but it's carrying too much pace again it's gone wide loose ball of midfield Aero put the pressure back on this Castle defence and Jerk Kenny is there to alleviate the danger as a uh, slight mistake had been made Danny Scanlon trying to get away from Sean Mahan. Nice scale, nice stick work by Scanlon. He leaves the slither behind him and it's Tobin that comes along. Sends it low. This is good play by Aero. And that goes off the Castle man and let's see what the umpire decides. Looks like it's going to be a puck out for Tommy Hegarty. Coming now established uh, clearly as the Clarecastle number one. A man who really thinks about his game, concentrates so hard, and now is one of the best uh, goalkeepers in the Banner County. And very rarely beaten in either league or championship. Danny Scanlon. That's going to be a free for Clarecastle. And Anthony Daly going to take it. Certainly here in Cusick Park in Ennis, plenty to talk about at half time. Not just the state of the in the uh, two teams in terms of the scoreboard, but also uh, all the other activity that was happening on the pitch. Fergus Flynn comes away with it down the middle of the pitch. Trying to get onto it is Stephen McNamara being pulled away there. Anthony Daly gets the loose ball. Stephen Sheedy, Jerk Kenny. <laughs> Pass it back to Anthony Daly, did well. Sent it in towards Robert Fitzgerald and Kenny Ralph. Half blocked by Paddy Gilfoyle. Comes back again towards Robert Fitzgerald. This is Fergie Tuhi now operating once more at centre half forward. That's a dangerous enough ball. Noel Constein is underneath it, but he drops it. 
And he has to go down at it and gets his clearance in. Down towards Dermot Fitzgerald and uh, Cahal Egan of LO. Conor Lynch backing with Stephen Sheedy. Back to Anthony Daly. Lynch coming away in the challenge. Referee Sean McMahon deemed that Anthony was holding Colin Lynch. I would question that decision, but uh, no major objections from Clare Castle. And this is going to be a free for Aero. Declan Tobin is looking on as Fergus Flynn takes this free. He's already scored two points in the first half. This is more to the right of the post, but he hits it very well, and it is sailing over the crossbar for Fergus Flynn's third point of the match. Centre-back doing a Shawnee McMahon. Indeed, all the pre-match predictions were correct. And now, we have a major championship match in our hands here. It's the first point on the for Erog in this second half and first point in a long time, Sean Mahan. Remember Erog are now playing with wind advantage in the second half. Jerk Kenny, so solid, so dependable at cornerback. Down towards Denny Scanlon. I haven't seen too much of him really. Sending a ball forward. Paddy Guilfoyle. Alan Neville comes out to gather this. Sending it in towards Noel Constein, but that is gone wide. Up by Noel Constant is a lengthy one. And down towards Colin Lynch. About to be tackled by Oliver Plunkett. And that's going to be a long ball for Clare Castle. <laughs> Oliver Plunkett going to take this sideline ball as Tom Howard there goes out of picture for Clare Castle and along the sideline. Kenny Scanlon. Fergie Tuhi, picked up by the Sparrow, up towards Alan Neville. Tomás Corbett is there for a rogue. Playing quite solidly at full back, this is his first mistake and Danny Scanlon avails of the air. Tomás Corbett knows that he gave that ball away rather too easily. And Danny Scanlon took his point. Pushing there, and the referee's whistle blows, and it's going to be a free for Clare Castle. Anthony Daly is the man that's going to take it. It's well, just knocked away by Fergus Flynn, Stephen Sheedy, Danny Scanlon. Going for his second point of the match. And Tomás Corbett intervenes well and flicks it out towards Paddy Guilfoyle, who's in a spot of trouble here. Here's Robert Fitzgerald trying to make an angle for himself. Going through, still an angle, hits it well, and Noel Constant made a great save. And pulled on first time and sent way down the field here, out over the sideline. But that was an opportunity for Kirk Castle. And Noel Constant stood firmly and made a point-blank save. Oliver Plunkett, Danny Scanlon, Fergus Flynn, all by 52 who looks to the gods and says, why me? It's a free just on his own 45 meter line here for Fergus Flynn. He's already scored three points in this match, all from centre back and all from freeze. Again, a long puck down towards the corner forward. Stephen McNamara decides to leave it for Cahal Egan. Flicks it behind him, but there's nobody there except Anthony Daly, whose effort is half blocked by Cahal Egan. And that's going to be a sideline ball. Anthony looks rather disgruntled, to say the least. Hey, 
Seamus O'Reilly there on the right hand side from the County Express looking on as that ball is sent in. Doing good work here is Declan Tobin. Well hooked by John Pine. Comes back to Declan Tobin. That's very high and it's very much over the bar. Declan's first point of the match. And they're all back in business now. Tommy Hegarty's puck out. This side. Knocked down by Stephen Sheedy. Did well. Sends over towards the left half forward position. Kenny Ralph comes across to gather. Nobody there except Fergus Flynn from Aero. A bit of calling would help. And that's gone uh, off an Aero then for a Clare Castle ball. There's Roger McMahon looking uh, fine and healthy, thanks be to God, and well again. Just uh, telling him about a couple of changes that he might uh, make. There's an injury there just to the left of camera for the Clare Castle man. So good indeed to see Roger involved with Clare Castle once more. As we await attention for the uh, left half back from Clare Castle, Oliver Plunkett. And Charlie McMahon quite happy to uh, stop the clock as such until he is okay. Now we can have this sideline ball. <laughs> Kenny Ralph getting inside Fergus Flynn. Coming across to take care of him as such as Michael Gairn. He did well, tackled fairly. Eddie Guilfoy leaves it behind him. And coming away with it is Ronald Cooney. Now back in a defensive role. Ken Morrissey doing well at right half back all the way through. Fergus Flynn sending it back down the middle. Cut out this time by Oliver Plunkett. As the Castle forward line seems at the moment to be rather depleted and disorganised. Oliver Plunkett, Sean Mahan, going to challenge. Stephen Sheedy using his strength. Pulled on first time by Cahill Egan. Sent into the middle. Sparrow doing well here. There's a chance of Robert Fitzgerald putting this over the bar. That's exactly what he's done. Very much against the run of play because uh, Air Rogue seem to be dominating the half back line midfield area at the moment. And in the one very rare attack, Clare Castle get a point. John Mahan again. It's a good ball. Al Shannon can't uh, get to it. Ball is broken clear. Coming out is Martin Sheedy. That's good play by Clare Castle. And Fergus Glenn has dominated the centre field area far their own. There's a hurley some flying there in the background. And referee Sean McMahon has given a big Aero number six the free. He really has been playing very impressively at centre back. As uh, Kirkcastle bring in James Healy. And it looks like off camera that Fergie Tuhi is the man that's going to be replaced. The Fergus Flynn has been very much the rock on which this uh, Magpie side have perished so far really has sealed up the central pathway to goal and he now is going for his fourth point of the match and considering the wind is to his back he just might well do this James Healy will be wearing number 22 as you can see Fergus Flynn drops this dangerously near well gathered and the Kirkcastle defence had to be alert there to block that shot Colin Lynch is in the thick of it uh, Steve McNamara rather but that ball is gone wide and Tommy Hegarty trying to encourage his defenders to uh, stay solid not to let these Aero boys in and once more Tommy Hegarty 
about to take a puck out. Very close, very nip and tuck affair here at Cusick Park. Tommy Higgerty. Puck out, drops down towards midfield area. Anthony Daly chasing after it. And that's going to be a free. Jerk Kenny is accused of doing something. Which I must say I didn't spot here, but it is a free for Arrow. Carl Egan is the man that's going to take this. As once again more attention is required off camera. Now Cahill can place the slither again and take the free. Very unusual style of free taking. But if it works, why change it? And that's his first point of the match. And Airog looking stronger and stronger now as time progresses. Remember they do have the wind to their backs in this second half. Up by Tommy Hegarty just landing a little bit short. Stephen Sheedy is pushing Colin Lynch out of the way. Sheedy over towards Denny Scanlon. And Scanlon giving it everything. And Noel Constant will wait for it for being challenged by Alan Neville and Gerald Lachlan. And a little bit of exchange there between Constant and Gerald Lachlan. And I'm not too sure if Gerald Lachlan made contact, but Sean McMahon is still going to speak to him uh, he is aware of I think what happened but he's still going to book Noel Constantine Noel being told to get up by all and sundry <laughs> Noel is explaining exactly what happened and he in turn gets the free out Alan Neville now having a word with the referee spectators, well some interested see this free going to be taken by Noel Constantine I'm sure that will be a talking point in the pubs of Hunter Castle and indeed in Sully's pub in Ennis as well here comes Danny Scanlon Alan Neville Castle dropping this one in towards Gerald Lachlan Eddie Gilfoyle, Alan Neville is there, Moss Corbett, Gerald Lachlan again, and Noel Constantine had to be very alert. Good save because he had to see that only very, very late. Gets it out. The castle keep the pressure on. Kenny Ralph back towards James Healy. Kenny Ralph again lending assistance. Difficult enough angle, dropping this one in, and again Noel Constantine is underneath it. Cahal Shannon sending it in towards the corner. Oh, good work there by the Clay Castle Van Bernard Scanlon just getting a boot to it. Ball comes down towards Colin Lynch. That's straight off the ground. And that's going to be a free out for Clay Castle. And tensions mounting now here in Cusick Park. Final whistle draws a little bit closer all the time. Patrick Castle hoping to hold on to their title as Clare Captain Anthony Daly takes this free up towards the sparrow. Oh, well gathered. Giving it inside towards Kenny Ralph. There's a chance here of a point if he can lob this in, but it's gone to the left of those posts and walk. Again, Noel Constantine will take the puck out. Gives it down towards Barry Keating. Nice stylish hurler gets away from Kenny Morrissey. Battered away this time by Martin Sheedy. Great defender. Rutler Castle down through the years. Rutler Castle have it again as they seem to gain in confidence now. Leaving behind him for the first time is Fergus Flynn. Here's a chance taken at the first opportunity that he could and sends it wide. 
So it's still very close indeed. Not too many scores in the second half. This is a real battle of uh, wits on both sides. Sean Mahan fouling Stephen Sheedy, so that's going to be a free for Clare Castle. And Tim Daly going to take it again. Well gathered by the right half back Mark Fitzgerald. Under the space. Very well taken by Paul Shannon. Found some nice touches inside Anthony Daly. Well hooked by Oliver Plunkett. Well, Plunkett did very well there as he was well beaten but kept at it. He's dropping in towards Tommy Hegarty, but it's gone over the bar. And full credit as well to Kyle Shannon. He had to really work hard because of the, the defending by Oliver Plunkett. And he made the space and got enough power under the slitter to send it just barely over Tommy Hegarty's crossbar. Puck out again by Tommy Hegarty. Referee just sorting out affairs uh, off camera at the moment with substitutions coming in. And all that has been sorted out, so Tommy Hegarty should be able to uh, take the puck out. That is if he stays in pitch up. <laughs> Here's Tommy now. Situation under control. And the puck out well taken. Oh, superbly gathered at the far side. And that's going to be a free for some holding there on the Clarecastle man. And again, it's Anthony Daly that's going to take the free. I think he's going to leave this one and give it to James Healy, who is well known for taking frees way out the field. Did it with Flannans in Hearty Cup competitions. Very powerful young man. James tries to drop this one in. Gerald Lachlan. Out towards Robert Fitzgerald. Mark Fitzgerald. And that is going over the bar. Dermot Fitzgerald with a very good point. Again, that breeze to Herald's favour. Could be the difference in the final few minutes. Uh, Castle find themselves trailing. The ball sent across field. Over towards Alan Neville. Chance here of a point, and that too is going to the right. Field. It isn't that Clare Castle haven't had their chances, but uh, just inaccuracy. As Pat Healy goes out of picture there, he was introduced earlier on when we were having a look at Tommy Hegarty in goal. Pat Healy was introduced. A great uh, catch of the ball sent down towards Gerald Lachlan trying to get away and the close marking arrow of defence that's a good ball inside Eddie Gilfoyle leaves it behind him comes back to Alan Neville tries to pick it up there and fancy uh, stick work not the place to do it from the arrow goal both back there is Robert Fitzgerald scoops it out of his hand and that, I think, is going to be a puck out. In fact, it's not. It's going to be a 65. Anthony Daly is going to take it. He's dropping in. And again, they're all defending for their lives at the moment. Down towards Colin Lynch. Oliver Plunkett. Billy Ralph. Fouled by Declan Tobin. Declan says to Shawnee McMahon that he went in with his shoulder. And this is going to be a free for Clare Castle. Kenny is uh, sufficiently fit enough to uh, hop up and uh, take the free himself. Hits it well and puts it over the bar. That's five points for Kenny Ralph. As always, a major contribution to the Clarecastle cause, particularly in a day like today, when the wind is a little bit tricky and you're under pressure. A reliable free taker 
is indeed invaluable. Ah, oh, brilliant from Connor by Declan Tobin. Goes back outside towards Colin Lynch. Makes an angle for himself. Drops it in towards Sean Mahan. Left all alone. Drives it in low and Tommy Hegarty is there to scoop it out for a 65. Hegarty had to be very alert because he really hasn't had that much to do all day. But, uh, that's always the worst kind of a scenario for any goalkeeper. Declan Tobin meanwhile picked up an injury out around midfield. He seems to be alright. And uh, this free, this 65, about to be taken. Simon Moroni there, former county secretary involved with their role, is going to be taken. As uh, Nola Jesco from O'Callaghan Mills looks on. And this 65 going to be taken by Fergus Flynn, who scored three points already. And uh, this 65 could well be within his range and his fourth point of the match. You are possibly about to see. Nice style, nice strike. Is it accurate? Yes, it is. All the way. Good point by Fergus Flynn. So that 65 conceded by Tommy Hegarty, punished superbly by Fergus Flynn. Hegarty's puck out is over to this side of the field. Stephen Sheedy, showing great character, fouled by Sean Mahan. That's going to be a free. Phil Colley giving a little bit of advice there, Declan Tobin. So this free for Clare Castle to keep them in touch. And Kenny Ralph again with the responsibility. You can see there that the breeze is so strong that he really has to make sure to see whether it is any way from an angle or straight down the middle. Let's see what he does with it. Hits it well, and that is going to the left and right. Opportunity gone a begging by Kirkcastle. Noel Constein with the puck out. Well added to. Indeed well gathered by Kenny Morrison. Once again, there's a tussle off the ball, but uh, we continue on with the action. Comes down towards Roman Cooney. That tussle now sorted out. As Castle finds himself in a little bit of pressure here. Anthony Daly has to go back to gather it. Leaves it behind him. Now he has the time. He delivers the clearance down this side. But out over the sideline. Line ball for Aero. Castle still in front, but only just. Rogue make another substitution, throwing another uh, dice into the ring as Colin Lynch comes across to take this sideline ball. The Castle man, meanwhile, done injured is Bernard Scanlon. On the edge of the large rectangle, Tom Howard is there on the right and uh, just requiring some medical attention. It obviously seems to be cramp that's affecting Bernard. He's played well at left corner back. Alan Lynch with this sideline ball right here in front of us in uh, Cusick Park. Just in the into the middle, there's a wild swing by the Tercassi man. Referee Sean McMahon gives the free to Aero, dead straight in front of the post. Sean Lyon is obviously involved now with Aero as well. And this is going to be an opportunity for Aero to level the match. Now, Carl Egan has only scored once in this match, that from a free. Going for his second, this most unusual style. It should be an easy one, it is. And the sides are level. Eleven points for Tercastle, eleven points for Aero, and it's all to play for now. And anybody who thought about leaving, a few early stragglers, just might wait on now. And the Munster Cup champions about to lose their titles. It's going to be a sideline ball for Tercastle. It's 
to Stephen Sheedy's delight. Going to take this is Oliver Plunkett, just inside his own 45 metre line. An easy ball for the old man. Half blocked by Stephen Sheedy. Denny Scanlon gets his clearance in. Half blocked again by Alan Neville. Gets inside Fergus Flynn. And passing it over towards Gerald Lachlan. Very difficult angle for the Sparrow, but that is dropping to the left and wide. The umpire is very strategically placed to make a decision. A very assertive one it was by John Power and his colleague over there at the far side. And that means that the sides are still level. 11 points apiece. The minutes ticking away now towards 60. Noel Constein with the puck out over to this side of the field. Underneath it, oh, brilliant catch by Stephen Sheedy. Gives it over towards Denny Scanlon as Clark Castle step up a gear. Stopped in their tracks this time. It comes towards Declan Tobin. Switching play over to the far side. Jack Penny is there first, as always. He really has been rock solid for Clark Castle. This time he loses out. Sean Lyon trying to get a hand pass over towards Stephen McNamara. Putting it into the middle towards Colin Lynch in front of the post. Colin sends it over the line. Is that the winner for our world? Is that the end of the world for Clark Castle? This could be sensation here in Cusick Park. The crowd's not leaving now, as we are about to see in the very first round of the Clare Championship. The Clare and Munster champions go out of the championship. Is it possible? They have a free. James Healy will possibly take this. Stephen Sheedy disgusted with the way things have gone. As uh, Danny Scanlon seems to be just trying to work out any sort of a cramp difficulty he has. This is James Healy. Dead smack in the middle of the pitch, as you can see by the line beside him. He gives it everything. It's 12 points to 11 in favour of Oro. It is now 12 points apiece. The sides are level. And surely now it's heading for a replay. We're into injury time. Carcassel and Oro, two of the great clubs, not just in Clare, but indeed in Ireland. And the referee from another great club, the Market in Fergus, closed the full-time whistle. And after a wonderful battle of hurling, great skill and passion, maybe not the real match we were expecting, but for passion and guts, it's all over. Colin Lynch and Anthony Daly can now smile about all their early tussles and say, well done, that's what it's all about. It's all over now. And they will meet again, probably next weekend, in the first round of the Clare Senior Hurling Championship replay here at Cusick Park. Johnny McMahon brings to an end a match that ends Clare Castle 12 points, Aero 12 points. It goes to a replay.